It's Tuesday, March 26th, 2024. And uh, it's kind of early, so if I seem kind of tired and bleary-eyed, that's uh, just because I'm only one cup of coffee in so far. Now, I've been working ahead here, and only yesterday did I start in on the last bit of trimming on these covers. I've been assembling covers uh, until... Well, I assembled covers Saturday and Sunday, and <clears throat> you can see I have some here, I have some here, and I've already trimmed up and palletized 50 of the covers, which is a quarter of my quota. So these are in excess of those 50. A few things I'll show you here. Well, um, I will show you the trimming process on these. These have not been trimmed yet, but this is the result. The online community these days kind of is what it is, and, and you can decide to get what you want to get from it, really, uh, because we all know there's a lot of nonsense and there's a lot of negativity there. But one of the really positive things is uh, collaboration with like-minded people. You know, we as beekeepers and or woodworkers, as we're doing right now, uh, we can share techniques and share things that we do and, and ask questions about things we're unsure of. And so <clears throat> I recently got to know Tom Bacon. I want to shout out to Tom. Thomas Bacon, I think, is his uh, YouTube channel. And I was, I was kind of commenting, not complaining, but commenting that uh, I was seeing a tear out on my covers as I trimmed them. And where that was showing up was when I pushed the, the cover through the saw, it would tear out on this side. And uh, Tom said, he thought about that a bit, and he said, well, he said, the first thing I would do is uh, I'd put a high tooth count blade on that. And I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. I just got lazy, and I just had my raggedy old, this is a cheap DeWalt blade. Uh, it's a 32 tooth, as you can see. And it's just what I've been using to rip the lumber and look, it's all dirty. Uh, it's really not even that sharp. <laughs> so this is kind of a throwaway blade. It's cheap enough. I think it cost me 10 or $15. It would cost me $20 to, shape, to sharpen it, which, you know, I might sharpen it once or I'll take it to the saw shop and get their opinion on it. Anyway, I, I bought a bunch at Christmas time. They were on special at the store. I bought a few packs, so I have some spares. Now, so I did um, switch that blade out to a 60 tooth, uh, I call an ATB, alternating top bevel. Uh, so that's the 60 tooth, and it's brand new. So I've got, and I've got two of these, so one's in the saw. And uh, so this is a brand new sharp uh, 60 tooth ATB uh, blade. You can see here it says ATB. And what that is, is the, the teeth are beveled alternatingly. And I don't know if you can see that here, but uh, yeah, I don't think you can really see that. But one bevel goes this way, the other bevel goes that way. So it makes a really nice sharp tip on those to sever the fibers right at the edge. And, uh, and I'll tell you, that's working really well. It's, it's not a panacea. You still have to go kind of slow to avoid tear out. The other thing Tom said is he said, kind of do a two, uh, a, uh, two part pass in there. So I've been putting the cover this way, running it through the saw and cutting this far. Okay, and then I'll flip it over like this and then cut the rest of it. And you can see that now each time I come through this, this side, which is where I was concerned about the tear out, that's what you're going to see most, right? And uh, it, then I can come through this side in this orientation. I still can get a little tear out here and I still can get a little tear out there. That's not as important, you know, it'd be nice to make that go away, but you can see that there's not a lot of tear out particularly on this one. And, uh, and so that's made a really nice product. Uh, yeah, so, so I'll give you a close up on these roundovers. 
So I round it over all the edges, all the way around, and all the way around here, and all the way around here, all the way along all the edges. The only, only edge I do not round over is this. I do round over this part here. See, if you go to the bee yard and you pick up a cover like this, then it's easy on the hands. And you know what I found? A rounded over edge, when you pick up this cover with a rounded over edge, it seems lighter. It's not, but it seems lighter. Well, I guess it is lighter because I've taken material away, but I don't think that's why. It's that it fits the hand. It doesn't give you those sharp edges on your hand to make you think, oh, this thing is, you know, uncomfortable. And you may think I'm being weird, but you, you pick, pick up some of these covers and you'll feel the difference. Uh, so, so I've done those up and I've gone one step further and I've put my little handcrafted by Faith Woodcraft brand on each one. That takes a little while. I'll do that. I'll do that at the end of my day. I'm kind of tired. I'll just start up the torch, heat up the brand and uh, it doesn't take very long. That's my brand. Um, and this is just a off the shelf design that you just order it and put your name on that. It's uh, I bought this years ago from a company called Brand New. You can find them online. And I just heat that with my propane torch. So, so that's what I've done. I've got one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have 58 complete. And now I'm into trimming. You can see I've branded a few of these. Uh, I've actually done, I think I've done all of them because I did the uh, alternating ones on the other end. So <clears throat> the idea is here because here to here uh, on the outside of these shims is a quarter of an inch wider than the overall finished width. So then what I can do is I can just trim this one a little bit, cut this overage off here, trim that one a little bit, reset the saw, trim that one a little bit, and then it makes a perfect uh, finish on each side of that cover. I'm very happy with the results. People often ask me, well, why do you bother? You know, what a waste of time. <laughs> and it's funny how people will tell you that, that it's a waste of your time. Well, it's, it's a waste of my time, right? So that's okay. It's, if it's a waste of your time, then you have something to say about that. But uh, it's, uh, it's a waste of my time at this point. And if I didn't have that time to use, then I wouldn't do it. But I can. And uh, that's, so that's what I do. I love putting out a, a really nice product. And that's why I waste my time doing that. So today, um, like I say, I'm going to start trimming trimming these. There should be about another 50 here. Hopefully there's another 50 because this is what I'm doing. I'll stack them on this pallet and stack them up 50 high, 50, 25 high, too wide, and then I'll wrap them in plastic and then they'll just sit there because they'll be there for, they'll be there for near a month, I guess. And uh, they may go on to they will likely go on to some of the two-way pallets that I build. Uh, so it'll come off of this pallet and go on to two-way pallet that I built so that when I take them to the dipper, these I leave there for the customer to pick up and I take them to the dipper. I don't have to leave my little pallets behind. Those are kind of precious to me. So I'll just put them on the two-way pallets and leave them there for the dipper to finish. They usually finish them up that day I'll go. Uh, they're really nice people. I, I just so much enjoy going there. It's about a two-hour drive away, and I, I love dealing with them. And they're so they're so good to me, you know. Um, I'll go there with, uh, let's see, I'll go there with 200 covers and 100 two-way pallets. And I'll tell them, these <clears throat> you can kind of dip at your leisure. You know, if you get them done in the next few days or a week or two, that's fine. Uh, but then I'll also have, let's see, this time I'll have uh, 58 
uh, uh, six frame covers and I'll have uh, 18 uh, three-way pallets and those I'll want dipped while I wait so I can just make sure those are on you know separate pallets and no problem they'll dip those while I wait uh, and it won't take long either take about an hour or so I'll just kind of wait around and then I can bring those back with me I don't have to go again to pick them up because those are for me and another customer who's over this way and, and I told him I'd bring his equipment to him so that's uh, that's how that's gonna go and uh, I really appreciate dealing with the the dipping people so I need to get this pallet out of here it it's still kind of cold outside I don't know how cold it is but boy I go out there it's really cold it's a bit of a wind so uh, so my tractor's sitting outside and I'm gonna take this out and then I'll get the tractor in here uh, where it can stay warm as well and then I have to get to trimming these covers going through my saw a blade stash and remember me saying that that the blade I'm using is a 60 tooth alternating top bevel uh, because I thought this one was dull but it's not this is an 80 tooth alternating top bevel it's got I think a more aggressive you can see that now top bevel angle on there there's also a thing called a, a rake angle on the, on blades. And that has to do with what angle the blade, the tooth is in relation to the center of the blade here. Is it angled like this, gonna, gonna slice like that or a negative angle will actually rake like that against the wood. So this is definitely a positive rake angle and they don't often or they often don't um, list it but this does list this as a five five degree hook hook angle hook angle or rake angle um, so that's a five degree blade I'm going to take this one off and see what it's listed at okay so this is again this is 60 tooth and it has a seven, it's a seven degree rake here. See, it also, they also tell you the width of the kerf. And this is a thin kerf blade, you may notice that, as opposed to this one. Okay, so this is more of a, what I would call a full kerf or a normal kerf. It's point one two six and this one is a point zero nine five so you can tell that's a lot narrower um, the fence on my saw is calibrated for a kerf like this so this one requires that i undersize uh, on the gauge to get this the size of my part correct a little bit of trivia all of my pallets are going to be about a 30 second too long because I just went by the the scale on the saw on the saw fence and I didn't measure that I'm not cutting a hundred pieces of plywood over again just to fix that but that's the case so I'm going to put this nice CMT 80 tooth on here and it has, it doesn't tell me, one, nine, five. 
They don't tell me the angle of the of the bevel. I think when my saw shop sharpened this blade, they actually increased the angle of the bevel. I think that works for me, but if you think about how a how a sharpened edge works, you know, it's either like this or it's like this. So the the more acute you get that angle, kind of the sharper you can get it, but uh, then it gets dull faster. So the more uh, closer to, you know, square that is, and it stays sharp longer, but it, you can't get it as sharp just because there's more material backing it up. All right, we'll put this one away. And I'll explain this again. The reason these are cut so wide is that I could cut my plywood, plywood was four feet wide. I could cut that three pieces at 18 inches and that was good enough. And <clears throat> that's just fine at this point because this becomes my off cut uh, right off of here. And then I don't have to have, you know, extra cutting at the, at the head end. Um, and also the fact that if I'm going to have trouble with this uh, lesser grade plywood, it's generally going to be on the outside of the sheet, which is, this is a good example right here. So then I've got that extra inch and a half or so to spare. All right, so what I have to do for this is I have to raise that blade right up tall. And this blade has been sharpened so many times it's barely tall enough. But I think it'll be okay. And then I need to set my saw rip fence. Uh, it's a 16 and 3 quarter. I'm going to go a little more. I'm going to go a 16th more uh, for my first cut. Just so I can dial things in. This has a little bit of a irregularity there. Okay, for this one, I'm not going to worry about flipping it over get the to avoid tear out. I'm just going to uh, get the saw set up.
All right, I've got the last of them trimmed and boy, that made a nice job. That is just perfectly smooth and all the pieces aligned, of course, because they were cut at once. I just love that method. Tear out is a very minimal here. So all things considered, I'm quite happy. Now, the next thing is my little round over bed in my router with a guide bearing. Bearing runs along and just round the bit just rounds over the corners. The round over I'm using is not unlike the rounded edge on a stock piece of lumber that you get in the store. It's a little uh, a little more, let's see, how would you say that? It's a little bit larger radius, so it's a little more of a curve. And this is a little sharper. That's a standard edge and it will take a little bit off of that. For this job, I definitely need eye protection because there's little tiny wood chips go everywhere and I get covered in them and ear protection because that thing is noisy. I'm also going to run my overhead air filter. Friday, March 29th, 2024, aka Good Friday. And although I'm working a while today, uh, I do give remembrance to the price that my Savior paid on the cross. He saved me from an eternity of uh, condemnation and damnation. And uh, it's okay if you don't believe that. Um, 
but I would encourage you to give that a consideration for the way things are. Now, again, it's Friday, so you know what that means. That's right, only three more days of work this week. So that's always nice. And it also means that I need to get the vlog uploaded. So uh, just making covers today again, as usual. You just come and ask me day by day, what am I doing while I'm making covers? Uh, and you can guess what I'm doing because I'm making covers. I'm making covers. I'm a little over half done making my 10 frame covers. And I'm way more than that because I've already made 58 six frame covers. So I'm way more than halfway into the, the whole covers uh, project. But after the covers are done, then I need to make 118 pallets. <laughs> so I'm a long way from this yet. So uh, this is just covers and you've seen this. The shop is looking a little more spacious because the uh, the uh, materials are moving out and the finished products are moving out of the shop into the shed. Uh, and I really don't have much else to uh, report right now. Yesterday was my seemingly weekly trip into Winnipeg. Uh, took in, of course, another 600 pounds of honey to the packer. And uh, I kind of had to do a, a little switcheroo because uh, I'd used up all of my jars that I had here uh, stored. So I buy my jars in uh, pallet loads. And so that's uh, this the large jars, the 1 kg jars are 77 boxes on a pallet. Uh, so I bring that home in a pallet and I, I repalletize it into, I believe, three uh, smaller pallet loads, something I can lift and easily handle with my tractor. I can't lift that full pallet with the tractor. It's about 900 pounds. Uh, so that's what I do there. However, this time I wanted to take honey to the packer, but I didn't have any jars. So I took the honey to the packer and then I raced over to the bee supply and got my jars and I raced back to the packer and took a bunch of jars in there and brought the rest home. Um, and that's a, that's a job for today still too, is to unload the rest of the, out of the truck. And it, it proved that if I don't have a lot of other stuff in the truck, I can fit 77 boxes of, uh, jars in the truck. There's, there's probably about 20 boxes in the cab. Uh, so that was yesterday, did some deliveries, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that was, that was my day. I'm usually pretty exhausted by the end of that day, uh, when I get home. So I don't get much else done. I did yesterday when I took the, uh, not yesterday, would it be Wednesday, I loaded the truck. I took the honey out of the cabinet, put it in the truck and put another 600 pounds in the cabinet and turn the heat up on that too. And you know what's crazy? This honey that I harvested here in my home yard, uh, it's been sitting in pails in in my bee barn, actually, is where I have it stored. Um, at 4 degrees C, so that's 40 F. And if you know anything about temperature, the relationship between temperature and granulation, you know that between 0 C and 20 C, so that'll be like 32 F to you know, say 70 F kind of thing. Um, that's the, the, the danger zone for granulation that, that storage temperature will hasten granulation. Well, this stuff has been stored in these pails since I extracted it in September. It's still pourable. It's still liquid. It's kind of crazy how that happens. Uh, so I, I do warm it a bit and, uh, just to make sure the packer doesn't have any problems. And then uh, they'll pack it in the jars and bring it home. So I need to go next week and pick pick up honey again. And I'll probably take that 600 pounds in with me now that I have jars. Yes, so that's how that goes. And uh, and that's it for that's it for this week, I think. Oh, com coming up next week, uh, you'll you'll see a video likely. Um, I think on Monday, I'm going to move the bees out. And uh, so that'll be a big reveal as to, it's always a big reveal as to what's alive and what's not. And uh, just to, people always ask me or often ask me, um, you know, when do you move your bees out? Uh, it, well, you can't do beekeeping by calendar. Um, so I watch the forecast, which, you know, is tenuous because forecasters can't tell you what the weather was yesterday half the time. 
Uh, so I look for overnight lows because my bees are not wrapped. They're not wrapped for cold weather. They're just put away in the building. Uh, I'll watch for overnight temperatures to come up in the foreseeable future. Typically over the last, I think, seven years, I've wintered indoors now. I'll look for a 10 degree, minus 10 C uh, overnight temperature. And anything warmer than that, then I'll take them out and I'll be good. Uh, this year I decided to move that up a bit and look for overnight temperatures of minus five uh, and, and higher. And that's, that's working out just fine because this March has been kind of weird. We've had a string of fairly cold weather. It's been close to minus 20 C overnight. Um, and I think it was minus 28 some nights there last week, late last week. Uh, but the temperature is not going up slowly. It's in a matter of two days, it's going from overnight lows of, of near minus 20 to overnight lows of warmer than minus five. Uh, so it's, it's just going to pop right up and I could probably move bees out, uh, maybe tomorrow, but, uh, Sunday nights overnight low is minus nine. And then, uh, Monday nights overnight low is much warmer than that. I think it's about minus three, minus four. And then foreseeable future after that, it's not colder than minus five. Now, that's the long-term forecast. Anything can change. I'm, I'm under no delusions that that's actually what's going to happen or guaranteed that what's, what's, that's what's going to happen. But we do the best we can do. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just waiting for that. And it looks like Monday morning, perhaps, move the bees out. And uh, uh, then I'll be able to see you know, what's alive and what's not. It's not going to be warm enough likely to do in-depth uh, assessments. Um, maybe though, some days next week it was looking like a, a nine degree, uh, nine degrees uh, C. Uh, so if it's sunny that and not windy, um, then that's a day that I could probably crack into a couple just to see what's going on. So that's the plan. But that won't be in this vlog because this vlog is coming out tomorrow. All right. Well, I'm going to get back to building some covers today. Um, that's all I have to tell you for this week. So I'll just wrap up and, as usual, tell you to stay safe and take care and have fun.